recently, I've been thinking back over all of my best Whitetail kills in the Hunter Classic up to and including the 187 that we shot a couple of weeks ago on Whiteheart Island, and one thing that's kind of become clear to me is a majority of them anyway have actually been multiplayer kills, and in all likelihood the fact that they're in multiplayer is pure coincidence, but I've been with a number of other players who have harvested a 190 that I got to see, you know, happen in front of me. and. That just kind of got me thinking, maybe there is something to a multiplayer, so we've entered a bunch of competitions as we've been doing, all of them are active in multiplayer anyway, and I think we're going to give this a shot for the next couple of weeks, just kind of do multiplayer instead of single player, and see how it does. And right off the bat here, we have an entire group of Mule Deer Bucks coming in. It's a spot that a lot of times I would actually skip over. I do think this is the best one, although I've only seen four. They generally travel in groups of five, so what we're going to do is kind of run by this guy for now and maybe see if we can spot a fifth one running off. And if that guy is going to remain stuck there, we may go and take him as well. I don't see any huge antlers or anything like that. And it looks like that guy actually got away, but it's a spot that I'll often just fast travel to this tent and skip this little field. But in this case, we got to see an entire group of bucks and a 145 is not bad. Now the mule deer comp running is actually for does, and basically it's just a weight comp. If I would get a really heavy track, we'd follow it. Other than that, I don't really intend on bothering with that. They max at 80 kg, so if we would see one that has like a really good shot at being close to the max, we'll try to take it in that case. I could be wrong, but I think the fifth buck might actually have been a little bit away from the rest. He doesn't look huge to me. Maybe around the same size. Thing is, he's in a perfect spot to just not really let us get a shot off. I'm thinking he's probably a little bit bigger, although that drop time's gonna hurt his score. 145 to 175 though. He sort of knows we're here. I wanted to alert him as we did and then get that shot off, but unfortunately I think we just ended up with at best a single lung. I mean, the lung blood itself is a good sign, so hopefully it's not too far. I felt like that angle could have even gotten us some, like, liver, but I think that would have dropped him. Regardless, though, a 155 score for him, and in under 20 minutes, two bucks down already, and there's some tracks here that were all new trails, which I'm gonna say then would be a separate group of Mule Deer Bucks, because I think I got at least two different grunts, and none of them look to be that heavy. I mean... I've seen them even maxing 100kg be pretty big, so what we're going to do is try fast traveling to the tower that I mentioned I often go to, and just kind of see if we can maybe call one in, and worst case, maybe we can take a doe and have a chance at that competition. Now this guy is actually coming from the direction that we just shot the other bucks from, and he very well could have been in there, I know there was at least one with this frame, but I'm not 100% sure that he was actually with them. I figure we'll quickly drop him in case there are others nearby, but, I mean, that already worked out and got us something. Now again, we have just a solo, pretty much average sized mule deer buck coming in with no other sign of a group, so hard to say where he's coming from. I'm guessing he has nothing to do with the tracks that we picked up, but there is a doe coming in as well. And as I mentioned, 80kg is the max for them. So I think we're going to try to drop her with Buckshot. The competition is no scopes. So that'll do just fine. And really what I'm talking about when I say a Mule Deer Doe with a good chance of being high weight, I've had Mule Deer Doe tracks that are like 75 to 100 kg. So naturally it's just going to be 75 to 80. And something like that has a pretty good chance of actually placing in the comp. But with a weight estimate up to 80, it's got a shot. And I figured rather than take another small buck that's not going to get us anywhere in a comp, we could at least try it and see what it does. Now, I do believe due to the kind of easier nature of hunting mule deer, and especially mule deer does, we would need like over 79 kg to have a solid chance. Right now it's got some third, but the competition started like four hours ago, so I definitely don't think that's gonna hold. But nice to see a top three entry for now anyway. Well, that certainly isn't bad. A 162-185 whitetail. We're just kind of hanging out here in the center tower for a while. I wouldn't be surprised if that guy cracks 170, I don't see 180 out of that, just because I'm not sure he's got the time length, but the whitetail competition unfortunately in this case is a white one. Now it is a white one where you have to shoot it from like a tree stand or tripod or hunting tower, actually now that I'm looking at it, 
I think he is a 7x7, but 93 kg isn't too bad. And just a 165 score, but I mean, again, it's kind of early on in this comp, so it's got us in second, but not a bad deal. He never called or anything. He just kind of walked in. So for our first whitetail of the hunt, definitely not a bad deal. I kind of wish the arrow wasn't sticking out here. You can actually see it sort of went in through his ear and then down into the spine and vitals, but had he been an 8x8, he definitely would be somewhere in the mid-170s. And I don't know, we might want to sit here a little longer. There was a doe coming in, but for the fact that that guy never called, there could be other ones doing the exact same thing around here. It definitely does seem to be the case that there are a number of deer in the area, but unfortunately, the remaining ones seem to be just white-tailed does, so I think what we'll do is try to drop this one, pretty much just for the sake of not spooking it and having it spook potential other things that we haven't seen. And then, if we can, we'll kind of just scoot around the one that's up the road there. Now, there is no competition for white-tailed does, so that is not going to help us whatsoever. But, I want to go over towards this tower, and I think moving in that direction should be fine. I'm not sure what is sneaking in on us. I know there was a white-tailed doe in that direction, but really quickly, we're going to go up here and make sure that there's not somehow a buck that I didn't see. Yeah, it is just a doe. I think we can probably get away with this as long as we crawl, so we'll kind of just be on our way here. From the moment that we got more into whitetail territory, I've been intentionally trying to go from like one tower or tree stand to the next, just because our current loadout doesn't really give us room to carry the shooting tripod rest, and that would be the only way to take, say, a super heavy whitetail that might place in that cop without being near a tower or anything, and in this case we actually have two whitetail bucks coming in, including one of the saddest 80 to 90 kg bucks I've seen in a while, but definitely not anywhere... Uh, near the top for comps. In fact, there are three in this area, but also nowhere near the top end of the score that we'd like to see. I'm pretty sure that is a fourth, and it is. So, this particular spot we just fast traveled to, and clearly, it's an area where whitetail bucks just happen to have congregated. The spot that I have on the map is one that I've had set up for a very long time, and clearly it was the spot to go to for now, so Hopefully, maybe the fourth one back there is going to be a little bit better. In the meantime, what we need to try to do is ideally just drop both of these bucks so there's no chance that somehow they run off and spook the one behind us. He's far away at least, so I think we might have a chance at it. Now, if the further away one spooks, it's fine, but it just would be nice to not spook anything at all. This guy is within range. Bit of a weird angle the way he's walking in. That dropped him. That buck definitely knows something's up, but worst case scenario now, as long as we get a shot off, he should run in that direction if we don't hit him well, but again, I would like to drop him, especially having just fast traveled here, there might be other stuff. We've seen there are a number of bucks here already. Um, I think we're going to have to get out of the tower. He's in that perfect spot there where we really can't get our shot off. So now we got to be real quick, but we managed, so now we just need to be patient, I think. If this isn't a display of it only takes one, I don't know what is. We're over four here in about as good a spot as you can get for whitetail bucks. I would say it's rare to get more than even two, like coming into the same call. To get four out of the same tower in, I don't know, what's the... about five minutes? It doesn't happen very much, and none of them were at all special. And then we go to the other tower, one buck in the area, and he was, I mean, at least a solid-looking deer, so hopefully somewhere out there is that just one that we're looking for that would score a little higher, but, I mean, I guess four added to our heavy recurve totals anyway, there's that thing that we've been slowly working on for many years at this point, trying to get a thousand kills with every bow in the game, and to get four in one spot definitely is helpful, but then we have these two other bucks here, and then we're gonna have to really consider fast traveling again sooner rather than later, because I don't imagine there's a lot of whitetail super close to here. By the way, lucked out on that brain shot to begin with. And then this guy was also kind of lucky with neck and spine, but litter in there as well. But yeah, we'll have to kind of see what shows up here. I'm curious how things are gonna go having four bucks in that one spot. I can't tell if he's got a spot. I think he did, but luckily, the larger objects with like a stall hitbox actually can't hide you. And I think this rock may have actually saved us. Now, I did see the score estimate on that buck, and he was only up to 155. But definitely considering the run of kind of just average-sized bucks, 
It's good to see a good massive frame again. 130 to 155, in fact, that's kind of an odd estimate. I think it may be the stickers and stuff that are messing with his score, but yet again, 82.95 kg, there's not been any that have quite gotten up to that 100 where we might have a chance of placing in the comp, but right now where we are, there's not really any way of getting into a tower or tree stand anyway, but a 147 scoring buck isn't too bad, and I'm actually tracking another one with the same weight estimate, 82.95. Now, I'm not too sure what he's going to do over here, and I think because of that, we better go slow, because once they walk down to the water, they kind of start to turn, and he might not actually be that far away. In fact, he could be coming in to the call, so we'll kind of be careful here just in case. Well, it certainly looks like tracking that particular buck was a good decision. A 165 to 190 estimate, and I see a number of deductions, so I wouldn't be shocked if we still end up with a 170. Like, his... what would that even be? Like, is this G6 or G7? is a lot longer on this side than the opposite, and then he's got a short tine on this side here, whereas that tine's a lot longer. But in order to speed this up, because he is still spooked, we're going to go ahead and load a 300 round, and we'll see if we can maybe drop him out there on the beach. I don't know with the reeds if it would make for a bad trophy shot, but what I want to do is get that little outline to come up again. He did just go unspooked if he grunted, but at that point we were in a little bit too deep in trying to make that shot, so... We'll see. I mean, I'd say easily mid-170s. Depends on those deductions. He might crack 180. And as far as the place that we shot him, I mean, it's a lot more open in here than I thought. Definitely a nice-looking frame on that guy. Managed to double on there with the kind of blind shot. And yeah, 176, had he not had the couple of deductions, he is easily a 180s buck, but definitely not bad. And actually, oddly enough, we had a quick little hunt here on Sunday during like the end of the Subnautica stream. Basically we wrapped up the game early and we shot a 176 there in multiplayer as well. I like the way this turned out actually, so this particular side is the better one. Like he's got this short time here and this short time here that are not shown as prominently as this side, so kind of lucky the way the lighting and stuff was. We'll go ahead and sell him and I think that actually might be our last kill here. I'm not sure what our total numbers are, and admittedly, I want this to work, I want multiplayer to somehow be the answer, and again, I really don't think there's any difference between single player and multiplayer spawns. It definitely did feel, though, like there were more total bugs, and at least compared to the white hard hunt we had a couple of weeks ago, way better quality bugs, we had three big frame ones, whereas, if I remember right, there were none in, like, twice the time spent over on white hard, so... I'm definitely looking forward to kind of continuing this experiment with more multiplayer hunts down the road, and we'll see if we can maybe continue to improve our bucks as well. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.